I'm joined now by Dr. Frederick Singer, who is the chair of the Endocrine Society's new clinical guideline for Paget's disease of the bone. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Let's first start by outlining this new guideline. Well, the committee has come together to uh, indicate how a practitioner should approach patients with Paget's disease of bone, a condition which uh, has been the second most common condition of bone disease, but far less than in osteoporosis, of course. In recent years, however, it's become apparent that this is less common than it used to be. And because of that, because physicians are not seeing as many patients, it's probably more challenging to know how to diagnose, how to treat. Well, the purpose of this guideline is to actually help a physician who may have never seen a patient with Paget's disease, or perhaps only one or two, to help that person uh, know how to deal with, with the patient and do the best they can. And they do have a new tool in their arsenal. Yes, the, the most interesting aspect of uh, the care of Paget's disease is the, the development of a drug in the past uh, eight or nine years, which is remarkable in that one infusion in a vein can suppress the activity of the disease for at least six years uh, in the great majority of patients. So great results. Incredible results. and. Uh, I don't know if this is as widespread in knowledge as it ought to be, but hopefully these guidelines will uh, bring this to, to greater attention. So you've touched on it a little bit in terms of being able to better treat patients, but really, how do you think the new guidelines will impact the field and people who present themselves with Paget's disease? Well, I think the new guidelines are an excellent uh, way to consider whether someone should be treated what tests you should do, what uh, blood tests or urine tests you might do to follow the patient. And also, uh, at the end of the guidelines, we talk about the special ways of treating complications, such as arthritis or the need for orthopedic surgery. So I think this can be very helpful in a practical means for managing uh, most patients with Paget's disease. So for testing and treatment, are you also including in the guidelines recognizing symptoms? The symptoms uh, we discuss uh, at length, uh, and the interesting thing is many patients have no symptoms, uh, but over time may get into complications. So often this disease is discovered by accident when a blood test is done for another reason, or an x-ray is done for another reason, and you find, oh my goodness, patient has Paget's disease. And then the question is, what next? Fortunately, the disease is on the decline, but it is still critical for anyone out there who may be yes. diagnosed that they can get the best care. Right. And I think what you're offering physicians is a chance to feel empowered as well, to know that they are doing the best thing for their patients. I would hope they would uh, get that sort of information. It's critical. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Okay. Singer. My pleasure.